Hello everybody out there, what's going on? Welcome to another edition of Instagram Live. It's been a little while here. I've been really busy doing some other tangs going on. Today we have Frank Elliott, rock guitarist here from Albany, New York, singer-songwriter. He's also in a band called Hometown Radio. So if you guys are tuning in later, thank you very much. Feel free to tag us and we'll answer all your questions afterwards. If you got questions in here coming up, feel free Ask away. <laughs> How you doing? We're going to add uh, Frank in here right now. Here we go. Let's make sure this is running. Got it on a couple different tangs. Here we go. Ready, Frank? I got an alien shirt on today. Hey, man. How's hey, it going? What's up? What's up? How are you? <laughs> Good. I was just saying, I'm getting eaten by a chest burster from the, oh, the aliens here. Love it. That's <laughs> awesome. Where did you get that shirt? Uh, I think it was, um, uh, what's that store? Not Hot Topic, but, um, the other one. Spencer's? Spencer's, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, get, I get a lot of stuff from there, too. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. pretty good. Sweet, man. So what have you been up to during this whole, uh, COVID situation here? Oh, just trying to survive, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, it's been kind of crazy. But, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of downtime to write music and, uh, work with my, uh, new band that I've started uh, a little hometown radio, about. right? Yeah, yeah. So primarily, right now we're a cover band, um, but uh, yeah. So we're just doing like the covers and stuff like that. Uh, we're actually getting in the studio on Saturday to record a new song and kind of like showcase, like debut the whole whole thing. A single? Yeah. I mean, well, we're gonna do a cover uh, just because that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll just you know attract people i guess and but uh yeah 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 so but yeah it's pretty good i mean you know it, it, times have just been absolutely insane but uh it's it's been good to have the downtime to be able to work on music and and all these other things that i probably wouldn't have been able to do if i was yeah. you know yeah so everybody's always busy running around everywhere and now we finally have time to sit here and you know, yeah. gather up all of our ideas and think of new things and some things we can't do still, but you know, yeah. it's, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you're from Albany right now or you live no, in Albany? I, I actually, uh, I live in uh, Rockland County. So from okay. Albany, yeah, I'm like, I'm like two hours from Albany. I'm going to say maybe three. Okay. Yeah. So okay. It's, yeah, it's more, uh, South of Albany, but, uh, okay. yeah, Rockland yep. County, New York. So what's your background with, uh, let's say, bands and stuff like that? We'll get into some guitar stuff. Yeah. Uh, I guess it started when I was uh, around three years old. Uh, I'm going to bring it back that far. But, uh, right. yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I was listening <laughs> to ACDC around that time. And then uh, kind of around that point, uh, music was very prominent in my life. Uh, I would always like listen to music. And then um, my grandmother actually played uh, bass. She had uh, she had four brothers and like five sisters and they all actually played instruments. So they were in a band together. Wow. That was so cool. Yeah, it's it's honestly crazy. I, I kind of wish like I had siblings to do that with because I mean, but anyway, so uh, she, yeah. was, she was like a huge influence for music with me. And she she was really uh, the inspiration that made me want to like play. Um, so around fifth grade, I started to try to play drums, found out that I absolutely had no rhythm. <laughs> I wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. Really? I, I remember playing like, uh, uh, it was like a Christmas concert or something and it was just, it went bad. I was just completely Horrible. off timing. Yeah. And it kind of like threw me off of music for a little while. So I was just like, all right, I, uh, maybe this isn't for me. You know, I, I love, I love music, <laughs> but I don't think I'm ever going to play it. Um, yeah. But then a couple years later, uh, she uh, she brought she brought the bass guitar over to like it was like a we were having like another Christmas party or something, and uh, she was like singing with my dad and my mom sings a little bit. My my dad can sing, but he's not really like a music guy per se, and like everyone was just singing. Yeah. that that kind of inspired me to be like, huh? I, well, I can't play drums, but maybe I could try the guitar or try the bass. Um, yeah. So yeah. then. Right around like 14, 15, I, I picked up the electric guitar 
uh actually no i'm sorry it was a acoustic guitar it was the uh the flamenco like um the spanish acoustic guitar oh yeah the classical yeah yeah, yeah she actually gave that to me and i started to learn on that and i tried taking a few lessons so right around this time period i'm like 12 i'm like in middle school somewhere so i tried taking lessons they weren't very interesting at all to me like i i'm, I'm pretty much self-taught i i took like four or five lessons in my life and uh <laughs> Yeah, it's not like we have a similar background. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, like there's great teachers out there. I'm not trying to hate on teachers. Uh, I actually was yeah. a teacher for a little while later on, but uh, I am now. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the time to be a teacher now too. <laughs> so yeah, perfect, perfect time online for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Remember that, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyways, um, what was I saying? So yeah, I was into. I started to practice with that guitar. Uh, I found out the lessons weren't working because they just were, they were teaching me classical stuff. And like, I know that stuff is great to know, but that's what I was going to say. Was it classical too? Yes. That, it had the same thing with me. They showed me, uh, I did six months of it though. And I go, I got to get out of this. Yeah. Oh wow. Six months. Yeah. So I took yeah. two or three and I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> <Messed out. laughs> I can't do this anymore. Um, because, no. Yeah. I just growing up from a hard rock, background that was just like my whole thing that's that's all i want yeah. to play is do that you're like uh, where's the distortion man yeah exactly right so yeah. uh so i broke away from the lessons um i think my parents got me an electric guitar when i was i'm gonna say around like 13 i got the uh the silver tone guitar it was like the purple it was like a purple bluish type i had i had the same guitar yeah. paul stanley yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it's great that's yeah, funny great. i was 13 when i started too oh really? <laughs> wow our names are similar we both started when we were 13 it's crazy dude yeah they <laughs> rhyme frank e frank p yeah, you know exactly um yeah but yeah so i picked up that and then once i uh once i started playing that man it was it was the everything changed for me um yeah. i joined my first band when i was like 15 years old uh, so that was, I was around in high school at that point. I was maybe 15, 16 when I actually, uh, really started to get serious about it. Um, and then I was like in numerous bands throughout high school and then college. Um, I started my own band. I started to get into singing. Uh, I was singing. What did you study in, in college? Uh, performing arts. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll I, get into that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I did that for a little while. And, um, you know, a couple things, you know, worked out. Some things didn't. There was a really big scene in where I live around, like, back in, like, 2008, 2009. It was, like, it was, like, a great yeah. local scene. It was, like, there was music happening every weekend. Uh, there was, like, a huge support. There was a huge following for everybody. And uh, it was, like, the MySpace days, the MySpace era, so to speak. So, yeah, you know, I remember that, those. Yeah, <laughs> good times. But uh, yeah, and then. Do you remember uh, what was before MySpace? I do. It was something, it was called something with an axe, and you could make a website and you could upload music. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. What, what was it was it? very, very basic. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like Xzilla. I don't, I don't remember exactly something like that. And then um, I remember, uh, do you remember SoundClick? You ever made a SoundClick? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. They were one of the first two. Yeah, for sure. I I com yeah. actually didn't even I completely forgot about that. I just holy flashback. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> but yeah, things yeah. really changed. And uh, yeah, so I, then I uh, I mean I was doing I've been doing original bands for years. Uh, some things didn't work out with some bands. So you know, as as you you, you probably know yourself, um, you know things get in the way. Life happens. Um, yeah. Creative differences and stuff. It's in which is fine. Um, so then I really started like decide to do my own thing. Um, I just really uh, started to do my own music. I was I was writing a lot, uh, and I just had all these ideas. And like I felt like every time I shared an idea in a band, uh, something would happen where the band would, you know, either you know break up or we had to take a break or you know. So I was just I'm like I have all these ideas. I'm writing all these ideas. I need to really, um, you know, like do something where I could like not have to like put it to the side or get rid of it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like you put in that time and someone's like, yeah, you know, dude, uh, my girlfriend broke up with me and I'm just, I'm not feeling it anymore, you yeah, know, or something exactly. like that. Yeah, that's exact. 
<laughs> That's funny. I'm going to college now. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's oh, – I've been through the ringer, man. I've heard all sorts of things. And there's also been drama oh, yeah. and egos, but, you know. I have one funny. year, I remember 2000 – 14 i auditioned 13 drummers and only wow. one stuck and another one lasted about three weeks or so oh then he told God. me that he was back on drugs and he had to quit wow oh my <laughs> so God. i was like out of, out of the blue because i go this kid's like i never even guessed he would take drugs unbelievable you know? the one you chose ended up being a drug addict yeah, I mean, I guess he uh, he wanted the drugs over the music, so. Oh, man, dude. Well, he Absolutely. know I didn't allow that stuff. So maybe he wanted a band that wanted to party, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are guys like that that, that are into the partying and, and can handle all that stuff. But I, I was never really one of those people. I just, like, for me, it was all about the music. As far as original music, it was always just about writing great music, putting out great content. and Yeah. Uh, yeah, being as professional as possible. But I, I, I don't hate on people that do that if they can manage to do the party and have fun and you know, not mess up their lives in the process. That's great, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it's tough. It's tough. Very tough. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, so I, I started doing my solo stuff. Um, throughout the quarantine, I was able to kind of restart this cover band that i've been working with um we're just trying to do it just to obviously make money and and uh kind of like we're, we're working on a lot of things to be ready when everything starts to open up again so what we've been doing is we've been doing a lot of like charity shows like shows outside that are like very covid safe obviously um and yeah i've seen you in the middle of a park or something like that too yeah or... yeah that was in yeah. uh, ridgewood new jersey yeah it was the yep. memorial park then that square so yeah, it was it was actually great. It was a beautiful. We got lucky. It was a beautiful day. Um, there was a lot yeah. of, a lot of people outside. It was a Sunday. It was it was wild. Um, it was where did where did you meet your band? Was it people that you knew already, or would like some people already know each other and just kind of came together? So it's it's funny. Um, I met the singer Alana uh, through yep. acting. we both we were both acting at the time, so I met her through acting. Was that in uh, Pete's movie there, the the one that you did? <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't that movie, but uh, oh, it was. Okay. I think we were doing like background work or something like that. Okay. Um, okay. But it was, yeah, still, still through acting, and uh, yeah. So I we like friended each other on Instagram, obviously, and uh, I saw her like I saw her singing videos. I'm like, oh wow, this girl's really good. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, it'd be great to put a band together that's like you know making money while I continuously do originals and 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 just try to do that all that so i reached yeah. out to her um so i found her uh and then she managed to bring in our drummer our drummer brian which uh i i met through her obviously and uh she was great um yeah. and he's great obviously and then i met uh rich and paul through one of my uh buddy's bands my my buddy alex and their band is they have another band called uh mohab machine so I met okay. them uh, through that band. I saw that because they we all live like very close to each other. And I saw them playing live. And I'm like, wow, these guys are great. And I remember putting up a status like looking for a bassist and a, and a keyboard player. And then Rich uh, reached out um, and then he brought in Paul. And then, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy because like we just we connected right away. Um, eventually, yeah. you I, need that. Yeah, you definitely need that. I from my personal experience i i haven't had that in a long time it's it's been it's been a good oh. couple of years so, <laughs> so when i when i, I guys, believe you yeah yeah but uh no it was great man it was great these everybody's very talented and uh yeah what so, do you cover that, that was one of the questions on here what's some of the stuff you guys cover so we cover uh a lot of we've been doing a lot of bluesy stuff we uh right now saturday we're going to be recording a, a a version of i put a spell on you um, that we do, which is like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's a very it's, it's a very uh, chill, like it, it has a very big bluesy vibe to it. I I really enjoy playing that song. Okay. Um, so we do a lot of we do a lot of uh, classic rock. We do a bunch of new stuff, um, like uh, "In It Fun" by Paramore and uh, "Dance Monkey." Um, all the yeah, yep. yeah. But we, we it's crazy because like we kind of put our own spin on it, and it almost sounds like it's an original but it's, it's not obviously, but it like, we kind of, yeah. we make it our own and it's just kind of cool, you know? So. In the video or two, I seen, um, 
I mean, I recognize the cover songs, but then I go, well, it's not like a hundred percent, you know, like it. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which is good because there's so many cover bands that they do it. Even even adding a part, yeah. taking a part away, it's like just why not just do it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly, <laughs> man. So, I mean, it's it's rather than be robotic and like copy note for note of the track, it's better to put your own stamp on it. You know, it, it just kind of defines you and like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. Even like, I don't know if you ever came across of, uh, you know, like I did a cover of Purple Haze and I released it, but I yeah. go, you know, I, I love the original song, but there's parts that I'm just, yeah. I, I don't I just totally just redid it. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. I actually, blew, I out, added man. parts. Like, I thought that was great. It was, it was a yeah. nice different twist on it, man. And it's like, it showcases your identity, you know, and like, it's a total, yeah. and that's what you, you want to try show. to stay in that style wherever you are you know exactly exactly yeah but Which, was, so you do i know you released a, a solo music video i think yeah. two years ago and the new one is uh love me the way you hate me Lo love the um, way you hate me yes yeah let's let's talk about that who mixed it where you recorded it and that kind of stuff yeah cool uh so the recent single actually both both singles that i the one i put out two years ago and the one that i just did i recorded at my buddy um mikey galgano um uh, okay. his studio is i think it's mrg studios um okay yeah he's like a, he was a, a drummer he was in a couple signed bands like um and he's he's just a great producer the mix um, sounds really good it's real clear yes absolutely yeah he he did a phenomenal job man um every time i bring a song into him he just like he just makes it like 10 times better <laughs> and it's, it's just oh uh, yeah it's unbelievable but i had That's cool. uh this recent single that I just did, I had out, I like wrote it like two or three years ago. And uh, another band that I was in was kind of playing it. And I kind of like redid it completely different. It's okay. Uh, we had my girlfriend was actually in the band. Uh, my girlfriend, Alex, she was singing on it two years, two or three years ago. Um, and when I, I wasn't originally going to record it, I was going to do something else. But I was like, you know what, this I feel like this song has so much potential. And it's just kind of like one of those, it's like a sick love song, but it's also like about, it, it's got like a dual meaning to it. So it's like, it could be like a love yeah. song or it could be about like, you know, facing your inner demons, like, you know, loving the, like sometimes you're your own worst enemy. And it's like, you like, you're kind of speaking to that, whatever thought in your, in your head is telling you, you can't do it. You're saying like, use it as fuel. Like, I love the way you hate me, you know? So yeah. Yep. Um, so, it would yeah. be different too having a girl either sing the whole thing or sing parts. Yeah, you know, that would have yeah. been different. It was a completely <laughs> different, different. We, uh, I had to lower the key, obviously. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I dropped it yeah. like a whole step, but it actually it sounded pretty cool uh, because it was it was a lot heavier, and I actually did the screams on it too. I haven't did screams in a long time. Uh, yeah, so I was kind the of guitar sounds like uh, Alter Bridge, a little bit of Breaking Benjamin. That's kind of the two I got. That's right up my alley. I love those guys. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that sound cool. like. That's that's probably the genre I would I would say that I I as far as my solo stuff that I would I would fit more towards is like the Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, all those. Yeah. Bands. Do yeah. you have uh do you have a home recording setup? Like if you were to do stuff at your house, or do you go to a studio every time? Or uh, for a full band, I actually uh, I'll go to a, a studio, but actually uh, my girlfriend. Yeah has like a home studio in her basement. Um, she has a studio in her basement and like we record acoustic covers. Um, okay. So yeah, she's, we got to get more plugins and kind of fix it up a little bit. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, mostly I go, most of the time I go to a, an actual studio and just, it seems like a day. The studio that you go to. So let me ask you this, because this is, this is a question, kind of a topic that, fans necessarily don't get it because we're we're musicians and audio guys but yeah so when you go in are you using and miking your amps too and using plugins and pedals or are you just going kind of the new digital route uh so i just we i do use plugins um as far okay. as at my uh, at the studio where i recorded my singles yeah i just used plugins um yeah. with my because my girlfriend's actually she has her own solo stuff too that i actually play guitar in uh it's called alex um it's just her first name uh when i record her stuff we actually reamp everything and 
and do that whole process okay. as well too. So yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not against either. I, I like both processes. I guess I would say that I like reamping stuff a lot better. Um, yeah. yeah. So you prefer kind of, I think you can focus in on the part, get the best performance and be like, you know, uh, you know, I don't have to necessarily think about how it's sounding right now as well. Like sometimes yeah. it distracts you because you're exactly. like, Oh, I know I got to go back. I got to fix that thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. man. Got to add more of this. Yeah, but exactly. Exactly. This stuff, uh, people that, uh, I'll see that they don't know out of this. So this is a reamp box, everybody. And basically a line goes out, goes right in, goes back out to your amp or your pedals, whatever. You could sit there all day long with mics or whatever pedals and direct ins and then feed it back in. And there yeah. you go. That's it. Pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's awesome. I like all that stuff. Yeah, I, uh, well, I'm, I was curious because um, the guitars, they sound, you know, really clear, thick. They sound, you know, modern. Yeah. But I'm always curious with that because I'm uh, I'm both. I like to use both. I, yeah. I like to use it much as an amp or a pedal sound recorded in as I can and then layer something on top. Right, right. But, um. I like the post grunge stuff, so I think that's what that comes from. You got to mic yes. the back of the amp. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So at least try that sometime. Next time you go to the studio, be like, I know we're using plugins and whatever, but let's mic a back of an amp and just use that back. embedded. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. man. It's yeah. it's sick. I love I love all different. You know, I'm trying all different ways. I mean, I want to do it all, man. I love I love I love yeah. all ways of recording. As long as the final product sounds good, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Sometimes it's cool. Like sometimes like, uh, I don't know, you know, it's like certain, certain things. You don't want to get a whammy pedal out. You don't want to get this and this and this and you just throw it on and, and you can yeah. do it manually, you know? Exactly. So it's cool. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. So you have, uh, do you have another song, uh, solo song you're going to do soon? Or? Yeah. Um, probably, uh, probably within a month. I've been kind of busy okay. with the, uh, the cover band and, uh, um, as I'm an actor as well. So the, uh, as you know, with COVID, yeah. the whole world has kind of been uh, quiet for a while, and now everything is starting to open up again. So there's been a lot of work. Yeah. So I'm working with the cover band. I'm trying to book work again and, and trying to just keep busy. But uh, I would yeah. I would probably like to record another single, at one at least every month. Um, I'm not That'd sure if cool. I'm going to do an EP right away. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do – I'd probably do one more single. Uh, within like the next month or so, and then hopefully, maybe maybe yeah, because you get your maybe. band song too. You, you're doing yes, right? exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So other other projects also take presence exactly. So where did the acting part come in between the music here when uh, you were younger? So it's pretty crazy story actually. Um, I I was going to move to LA with this band. So I've been, music has been like always the prominent thing in my entire life. Um, oh, okay. I was going to move to LA with this band, but unfortunately the situation was not working out for me. That it wasn't very, it wasn't a good move for me to do. So I actually stayed back and it was like, this band was working with a manager and had all this stuff lined up. And so they moved out there. I won't mention the name um, because we, we didn't end on the best of terms, but it wasn't like that but anyway yeah, so yeah so we kind of <laughs> separated and then for that summer i the like about a month previous i was working on all i was like all right well if i'm gonna move what do i have to do i was just kind of like planning this about you know all this stuff around moving to la and i didn't yeah i didn't end up doing it so then one once that happened i'm like man i don't have a band again you know this is this is kind of where my i was like maybe i should just be a solo artist around this time i'm like you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I started uh, applying to acting gigs because I'm like, you know what? Why not? I'll just give this a try. as like another yeah. extra money. Whatever, yeah, you know. exactly. And um, so I started to get into like the background acting and stuff like that. One of the first shows I worked was uh, this show called Gotham with Batman. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So that was like, that was like yeah. being a huge Batman and like a, like Batman fan and comic book nerd, I was like, this is, this is awesome. And I was just, yeah. I was just kind of thrown into that world and like learned so much stuff. 
Um, I just kept applying. What, what scene did you work? Did you remember? So the, the very first scene I worked was a scene, I think it was um, season four, episode one of Gotham. And it, okay. was, uh, it was like a scene where like the penguin is giving some, like the guy who plays penguin uh, is given like this big speech or something like that. I remember just standing there. I'm just like, wow. Yeah, he's like, running for mayor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And I was like in the yep. crowd for that. And I was just, I just remember going, I was just like, wow, this is actually like, this is a totally different ballpark, you know? So it's just like really, really yeah. interesting. Um, and uh, yeah. So then after that, I just started applying to more and more things. I started to, you know, work a lot in, in the acting world. And uh, I actually uh, applied to a bunch of stuff on Invest Investigation Discovery Channel. And I was able oh, to do, okay. yeah, a lead role um, with like dialogue and stuff like that. Because a lot of the stuff I was doing was just background. There's no dialogue. You're not really talking. You're just like a face walking past yeah, the camera. Yeah, so that's like the reenactment stuff, the, yeah. um, the yeah. story and all that. Or the Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. A lot of that, there's, there's no lines, too. It's there, There's a lot of walk-in. And... Yeah, so, I mean, and that was like kind of like my first little introduction to like lead work. And when they're just like, uh, you know, uh, say something along the lines of this, I'm like, I, I didn't know there was no script. So I was just like, what? <laughs> and I, yeah. that is like the first, my first day there, I think it was, I did, the one show I did, it was a show called Shattered. Um, the first uh, day I was there, I was just, I looked like a complete idiot. I was just like, uh, like I didn't, I had no idea that, that it, that's what it was going to be. I thought there was a whole script. I would have to yeah. memorize lines and, and, you know, get a feel for it. It was completely like, they just throw you in there and then you just, yeah, the the director goes to you. All right, well, maybe say something along the lines of, you know, like you, you know, you hate her, blah 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 blah, and you just have to. Imp it was total improv. This entire wow. thing. Like that house is very haunted, I tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, and it was a, it was, it was different, and it was cool. Um, when the show premiered, uh, when the show, I mean, when the episode aired, I was just like, wow, it's just like, this is, this was really a really great experience. I met some cool people on set, and then. Uh, I just started doing a bunch of other short films and feature films. And um, I worked with Pete on his film too. Yep. Um, yep. Managed to score uh, an award on that. I don't know how, but was able to do it. So it was like, this is, this is a really, uh, really yeah. interesting path. I seen that. I seen that picture. I, I know he was getting um, selected and nominated, but I didn't know he won anything for it yet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. It was cool. I'll have to get you in a, uh, a music video or something of mine here. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like to have a bunch of people in. Or, you know, I do horror movies, too, so I can always kill you off one I day. I saw it. Hey, that'd be great. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> I, love to be, I love to be killed off because in the last thing that I did, I was actually the killer. Like, I, I'm always, like... Oh, really? Like, yeah, I'm always stereotyped as, like, the, the bad boy or, like, the, the murderer, so... I, I, yeah, I, I like, to like be Billy in from uh, Scream. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Total vibes. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So, yeah. What do you What do you like for movies? Do you like more of like sci-fi or horror or? I right now, I mean, it's October, so I, I'm definitely into the horror movies. But you know, okay. I've always loved horror. I uh, like I said, I'm into like comic books and stuff like that. So I love I love all the superhero, the Marvel movies, the the DC movies were kind of let me down because if you follow the comics, it's completely different so but the as far as the animated universe i sound like a complete dork right now but as far as the animated uh dc universe like the animated films, yeah. those are that, great but the the live action like those those films are they've been slacking really bad well I, let's say the past 10 years i i loved all the older ones starting with uh was it the the 89 Batman, you know, yes. and all the ones that made in between. And yes, you know, there's some DC oh, no, films that people. Yeah. There's, there's some DC characters that people didn't know because they weren't labeled DC films, you know, yeah, exactly. But uh, I feel like ever since they did that, I call it the, uh, the Marvel syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they have to copy it? It makes no dang sense. It doesn't, man. It really doesn't. Yeah. Marvel has been yeah. killing it. I mean, their movies have been doing great, obviously. Um, and, uh, but they're the CGI ones, you know. Yeah. DC was always real, dark, grounded. Yeah, especially you, know, the you can have that stuff. But yeah. 
I mean, when a whole villain is CGI and he's, you know, 20 feet tall. Sometimes it's a little, yeah, it's a little much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely like the realistic little... stuff better, for sure. Yeah. In the comics, they are they are that big and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's, it's like a book. If you're doing a movie based off a book, not everything works. You know, you have to, exactly. you got to. Some stuff should just yeah. be kept in the book. And that's yep. <laughs> but yeah. Jerry goes, geeks are cool, she goes. Yes. I love, love being a geek. <laughs> Represent. Hi. Awesome. So what kind of guitars do you have? What do you play? So uh, I actually have a bunch of electric guitars. Um, the main one that I've been using right now and I've had since like two, I think it came out in 2006, is my Studio Les Paul. Um, yep. So yeah, it's like a cream white. I could actually show it to you. Let me try to swoop the camera around. I actually have all these guitars out right now. So try to show right. everything. Um, there you go. Yep. There we go. There it is right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, coming out of high school, somebody had one of those. Yeah. Um, so this one is, uh, you know, it's just cream white, mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard. Um, it's got a... Uh, Heavy, right? Yeah. Oh, very, very. Uh, it's yeah. got the humbucker pickups, the uh, trapezoid uh, inlays. It's just, I've had this thing forever, yeah. man. This was like my first real, uh, it was my first Gibson. It was just like my first real electric guitar after this, the Squire. So it was just like jumping from a Squire to the Gibson. I'm just like, wow, this is like a completely different ballpark. Um, yeah. 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 This guitar, man, oh, it was just unbelievable. Um, then I got, a, I got another one that I just actually purchased uh, during COVID, which is the, uh, the Fender American Pro. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the Telecaster, and dude, this thing is unbelievable, man. I, I'm like I'm absolutely obsessed with this guitar. It's only got oh, it's got two pickups, but the other one's slanted. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's a single coil, um, and yeah, it's just it, it's it's a beast, dude. It's absolutely insane. Nice. Yeah, and then I got this. I get a, uh, they get like a nickel-y sound to them. Does that make sense? Yes. You know, like the metal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it this yeah. is this guitar is great for playing blues. Um yeah, it's so good. yeah. Great, great blues guitar. So I use this a lot with the cover band whenever we do like the uh the bluesier stuff. Um, you know, we do we do Jimi Hendrix and uh the Beatles and stuff like that, and this guitar sounds unbelievable with this uh with that music. Um so then I got this guy too, and this is the this is the guitar I kind of use for the heavier stuff sometimes as well. And uh, this is a PRS SE standard. Yeah, I was gonna say, I go this song. Okay, in your song, it sounds like you used a PRS guitar, just because they have a uh, distinct sound. Yes, and Ultragrid uses that kind of stuff. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, Tremonti, I was right. Mark Tremonti is a huge. Uh, a, I mean, he, I think he only uses PRS, but uh, believe yeah. it or not, I yeah. actually did not use this guitar for that. Um, I didn't end, I u I actually used the uh, the Telecaster for that. Track. Did you really? Yeah, it sounds just like that. Yeah, it, it's crazy. <laughs> My uh, the producer uh, Mikey that recorded the song, he's just like, dude, I can't believe we're getting this sound out of a out of a Telecaster. It's like unreal. Yeah, unreal. Yeah. Um, You'd have me fooled. Yeah, I had a, a lot. Of, it's funny because a lot of people ask me that, like, did you use the PRS for that? Because that sounds heavy as you know hell. And I'm like, no, I actually used the Telecaster. So nice. But, yeah. Um, but I love this guitar too. Uh, it's this guitar is actually relatively cheap, so I highly recommend it. If anyone's looking for a brand new guitar, I think this was like five hundred brand new. But this plays. Yep. I, I'll be completely honest. This plays like it's a thousand dollar guitar. It's yeah, it's, they're all made really well. Yeah, and it's very reliable. Um, it's got the coil split too. So let me try to hold this and so you could like lift that up and it just activates the the single pickup and then. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty sweet. It's got the uh, the tremolo on there. I don't have the bar on there, but uh, yeah, you could do like you know some cool uh, stuff yep. there. Then you got the uh, the bird inlays, which honestly, like that's what made that's kind of what sold me on this guitar. I knew PRS was good, but I'm like, wow, these inlays are <clears throat> really beautiful. So yeah, that was the whole thing, and it's pretty much all of them. Then I just got this. I play bass a little bit from time to time and just got this bass uh, from like a garage sale upstate. Doesn't say what 
That's yeah. cool though. I like yeah. I like the top. Yeah, it's but it's got this like crazy like uh I don't even know what it is. It's just like it looks like kind of like decayed a little bit, but it's it's just a very interesting. So that, yeah, the finish is. Is that just painted that way? You know what? I think it is. Yeah. It, there's no. It doesn't feel like it was like done naturally. It, it actually yeah, feels like that's it cool. Like a finish. Yeah. I've seen bass guitars that look like that. Real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then I just use this. You know, I, I think I used another bass to play because I played bass on the um, my uh, single as well. So okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, this thing is great too, and that's like the three main three main guitars I'm using right now, and they honestly are awesome. What do you What do you use for amps live? What do you like to use? Oh yeah, whoops, walked away. Uh, so for amps, I use um, uh, Fender Blues Junior, uh, three. Okay, it's a tube amp. It's pretty sweet, and I I had a bunch of half stacks and and other things in the past i had marshalls and tons of stuff and i kind of downgraded to this when i did my uh cover band like my okay. cover band a couple of years ago because he's like you know you don't need all this like crazy big stuff you know you, you could just mic everything up and it's just kind of easier and honestly this thing has a great sound it's just easy to you know carry around i mean you know as carrying a half stack is just can be absolutely annoying yeah. sometimes <laughs> So between um, weight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like, um, exactly. So I'm like, you know what, this is more efficient for me. And especially doing the cover band stuff, everything can be mic'd now and stuff. So I, I always I've had this thing for like nine years, I always get a great tone out of it. Um, it just sounds great. And yeah, I just I'm just like, you know what, I'm not going to upgrade unless I absolutely need to. So I've just been using this I put like a little Apple sticker on there. Um, yeah, I don't. I was like, yeah, no, I never heard of them making guitar amps. Yeah, no, this is not an Apple product. This is Fender. Um, but uh, yeah, cool. I had a sticker. I just put it on there. But uh, yeah, I use uh, the the nine, the Dario's too. I mean, the Dario. Sorry, Ernie Balls. And yep. um, yeah, this is actually my pedal. This is my uh, my little rig here. So it's just a Boss GT10. Um, you know, yep. digital effects. It's got everything in there, man. Tons of different stuff. So. Do you just leave it on the clean channel, then you control everything through that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, I've had this thing. I actually got this around the same time that I got this amp. So I've had this thing nine years, almost 10 years. So, and it's great, man. It's got a lot of good stuff on there. But I had a um, a 4x12, the Fender Mustang for a little while. Yeah. Those are pretty cool because they you could program them and stuff. But then I uh, I switched to Black Star, and then uh, oh, yeah. believe it or not, I found a Line Six that was like that. But it's a it's a tube, right? This right. head it's three hundred and fifty watts. Oh my god! Wow. Plus it's got tube in it, and it's yeah. uh, so I use I use that for recording and stuff now because it's just it's got um you get like the '80s chorus effect that you can't find anymore too. Right. Right. It's very traditional, very old school. It's got that it. old sound. So yeah, man, absolutely. That's, That's so cool. cool, dude. That's awesome. I had a I had a Line Six Spider Three. I think it was. This was like again in the early two yeah. thousands, like two thousand eight or something like that. And um, I got I sold the uh, sold the cab to Guitar Center, and they compl I was like young young kid, and they completely robbed me. Yeah. So, like that was not even worth getting rid of. <laughs> I think I like. I, I hate the spider amp. To be honest, the spider I think are, are the worst it, it, brand. Honestly, yeah, the volume it had so, so many issues, and I was just like, uh, yeah, it my, was. My live guitarist used one for two years when I was playing with them, and we could never get the right tone to it. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, it was definitely, okay. Definitely not great. <laughs> No, but you, you look the only stuff. Megadeth it is. If you want to play Megadeth, that they use that somehow yeah. in the past couple of years. So, wow, yeah. Well, at that time, this was 2011 or something. So they were pumping those out. Right, absolutely. I think. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I think I got it. Probably got it a few years before that, like 2009 or something. Okay. That time, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah those were not. You notice that? <laughs> yeah, you ever notice that with bands and stuff where they. It's not what they use, but it's what they promote, and all of a yes. sudden it gets popular. Exactly. So if like Dave Mustaine says, "I'm using the uh, spiders for three years," even though it really isn't. Yeah. Um. Everyone will go out and buy them. You know. Yeah. Absolutely, man. That's how it works. <laughs>
That's oh, weird. And that's it. Yeah. Well, let me know when you do some recording. I mean, I'm here. I've got my home studio. Maybe I can add something, a lick or something in your song if you want something. That'd be cool. That'd be great, man. Yeah, we should definitely collab on something. That'd be that'd be really awesome. Wait, where do you live was, exactly? You live you live upstate New York, or? Yeah, I live. Uh, it's like 45 minutes from Albany, uh, north. Okay. Gosh. Near Lake George. Oh, Lake George. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, I used to vacation yep. there all the time. We used to like go with family trips and stuff that's awesome though Every, everybody does yeah. everywhere yeah great. <laughs> love it that's awesome tourists man get them out of here yeah <laughs> absolutely that's cool though yeah i was i was watching your guitar playing and stuff and i go i might have to get him on a little little snip bit of one of my tracks yeah, too man. here see what's going on Dude, i think me, that'd be cool let me know man anytime i'll make the drive it'll be worth it it'll be cool i did not know that you did uh stuff as heavy as as your new you know single yeah i didn't know that until and, now and i was like okay all right yeah, yeah. I think it'll work. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly man yeah it was cool. uh, I, it was kind of i had an older band like around 2009 that would i i did a lot of screaming and stuff like that and it was oh, okay. very prominent in the in the songs and then i kind of like just stopped doing that and you know got in the softer stuff i got into multiple different genres and uh yeah, and I just kind of decided, you know what? I might as well just scream on this track because it it's a heavy track. It just like the the sections where I do scream, it felt like it just it just like belongs there. Yeah. 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 Sparingly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah not trying to blow yeah. my voice out, but you know, using it, you know, a little bit. It's cool. Stuff. Yeah, it was cool. Cool. Yeah. No, I I'd love to rock one of your songs. That'd be cool. Or uh, do a little background vocal or something. That'd be neat. That'd be great, man. Yeah. That'd be cool. Absolutely. So cool. I do that for a lot of people. I'm I'm all I'm into the recording and mixing and but I always throw it out there because it's a thing where I you know when I was younger, you know, I had the band stuff too and it, the band stuff to me original wise is always like you know, we're a band, we can only do this and we only have this and our image is this or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like the reason why I like the solo stuff is that you can work with anybody you want. You know what I mean? That, there's, there's free range, man. You can do whatever you want. There's nobody telling you you can't do this. You know, yeah. I, being yeah. somebody who's been in literally like at least 30 bands, you know, I love, I love playing with people. I love, I love being in a band. Um, but when it does come to originals, it, it, it can be very tough sometimes. Um, you know, it, every, everyone, everyone can, I mean, egos play a part in it as well, and everyone, yeah, yeah, you know, feels very personal with it. So it's like you gotta, and you you gotta like watch what you say to people, and it, it's just sometimes it can be very challenging. As opposed to your own stuff, it's like okay, I know I have to do this. It's it's a lot more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's a lot more pressure, obviously, and there's more, you know, there's more yeah. work, work to be done, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it also feels more, for me, it feels more rewarding um, just because I'm just like, wow, I played the guitar, all the guitar on that. I did all the vocals on that. I did the bass on that. Yeah. And it's just, it's kind of like, it's a very rewarding thing to do, but it's it's also a lot of work, so. Yeah, because it's probably stuff where you're like, I wish we could kind of change that or something, you know, or, yeah. or the band stuff sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've had tons of that where I'm like, this part does not sound good. I want to change it, but then. Yeah. You, you get outweighed by the majority and it's just like, all right, well, yeah, I guess that's not happening. <laughs> I got to keep my bass fill in there, man. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Gotta get this <laughs> in. That's cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, folks out there, I've seen some comments. So you can, it's the one I seen was on YouTube, but you're on uh, iTunes and Spotify, all those places, right? Yep. Amazon music, iTunes, Spotify, all those things. You could just check it out. And it's under Frank Elliott. Yes. Fra oh, it's yeah. under Franklin Elliott. Yeah, Franklin Elliott. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, just type it in anywhere. You'll be able to find the new single. You'll also be able to find the uh, the other single I released two years ago, which was called On This Road. So two completely yep. different songs, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. The style is a little different, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yep. But, but. It, it's, it's good to be diverse, I think, sometimes. But feel free tag uh, tag both of us on Instagram here. We'll get back to you. Make sure you follow Frank on here. Um, as always, these are all streaming. It'll be on Facebook and it's, um, YouTube and wherever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all those good places. Yeah. 
So, but I want to thank everybody right right out there before we leave. Uh, I've been doing a lot of these since May or so on a whim. You know, I was bored and I wanted to uh, do something different, keep people engaged and, and have chats like this where I think everybody was busy and stuff before. And some of the mentality was kind of like, well, I don't do interviews and stuff. And that now it's all like, let's, let's do it. You know, yeah. something to do, get out there, reach people. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you know all you guys watching here for the past couple months tuning in, rocking it out. We've had some great guests from local artists to idols to Daughtry guys, whoever. It's been fun. So um, cheers though because uh, it's helped me segue into New York State music, uh, doing interviews with artists. So maybe uh, maybe we can get your band if you guys come out with like a record and you do some shows, I get you on there. That'd be great, man. Absolutely, that'd be cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Check them out. If not, um, it's New York State Music, and okay. they'll do a write-up on your album or whatever you want, even your show, live show. Interesting. Okay. Invite them out. Yeah. Pete's a great guy. So That's awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so no much problem. for having me, man. I, I love doing these things, so it's so awesome. Cool. I, uh, anytime, you know, once, I mean, I can't get out anywhere right now. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're all kind of just like, you know, this is, this is just good to do. It keeps, you know makes the time yeah <laughs> sounds good awesome all right Frank. all right you. man well i appreciate it we'll we'll chat about a song Ch keep me in the loop yeah. about your stuff i'm i'm always here so we uh, we can uh throw down something and uh i don't know see where it goes absolutely man sounds great thank you so much all right guys any last minute question guys we'll hang around for a minute yeah. here type them in type them in right now come on type them in. come on Let's do the batman go. voice <laughs> Batman. I'm Batman. Batman. <laughs> I think, Robin. <laughs> I think like Christian Bale invented that voice, right? Because Batman was never like that deep of a, a voice, and then yeah. Christian Bale did it, and everyone's like, I'm Batman. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's funny because it's something I think everybody could do, but they didn't realize, and all of yeah. a sudden they're like, because there's, there's girls that do it, too, and they're like, oh, I'm Batman. <laughs> and I'm like, that's I not, wild. I have not seen one girl do that, but I do. I, I want to – if you have any links of a girl doing that, I'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there is. There is. There, every, there's, like, even, even girls. I remember uh, – because I was in high school when the first movie came out, and uh, I remember all the girls and stuff trying to do the voices in school. And I'm oh, like, wow. this is not wow. – this is wild. Yeah, I, I yep. know tons of guys that that tried to do the, you know, that did the voice, and I never seen a girl once try to do it. Wow. So. Yeah, you got to ask a few. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> That's will. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry asked your biggest influence, uh, probably in music, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that, too. Uh, wow, biggest influence in music. Um, I mean, I to be honest, I have so many influences but i guess the biggest one would probably have to give it to acdc just because they were like the i remember literally they were the first rock bands i listened to when i was like four years old it was like on one of those little mickey mouse cassette players and i'll never forget listening yeah. to black and black dude I, I sat there as a kid listened to the entire album i'm like what is that and i just i i for, like remember that like it was yesterday so i'm gonna have to say like acdc angus young that's for sure nice yeah. i like it yeah <laughs> it's so weird man you have the same reaction when i talk about metallica yeah <laughs> <laughs> damn I like the same too, thing dude. i love metallica yeah too. love I love it love them all dude yeah yeah the big, the big four did you i i seen some footage on that that was cool the big four. Oh yeah absolutely yeah I like that. All right, folks. So thanks for hanging out. Make sure you follow Frank on here. We got Frankie E, Frankie P. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Straight up. So we'll uh, hopefully see you guys next year. That's what I'm guessing. I'm, I don't know. It's kind of weird, you know, spending a year off, not playing out, but um, I'll see you guys in 2021. Awesome. Hopefully, hopefully. So. She just oh. added your music to uh, Amazon. Oh, thanks. hey, Brenda, love, what's up? What is it? I love purple. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Brenda from Florida. She's my uh, very first internet fan ever. Awesome. Going back wow. years. Yeah. yeah. That's so Years cool. and years ago. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> yep.
So cool. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully 2021 is a better year. We can only hope. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully the world don't fall apart. Yeah, hopefully live music's a thing again. Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. I'll see you later. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you so much again. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.